There are almost 400,000 species of plants known to science, and while most people can probably name 10 or 20 you encounter regularly, today we're going to focus on unique, rare, and downright bizarre ones. Whether they ooze out goo, smell bad, or eat meat, let's take a look at the top 15 most unusual species of trees and plants. Number 15. The Corpse Flower Don't be alarmed by the name of this first plant on our list. It's still just a flower after all. So how bad can it be? Well, the thing about the corpse flower, or Titan Aurum, is that it reeks. It smells, allegedly, just like a rotting corpse. But it also looks like it comes from another planet. This thing is huge, and despite the stench, you have to admit that it does look amazing. If it didn't smell so bad, maybe we'd be willing to have a few around the house. But all kidding aside, the corpse flower is also pretty cool, because it uses that rotting flesh smell to ward off predators and prevent it from being eaten. But despite the crafty defense mechanism, the plant is still a rare one and is a threatened species. They originate from the Sumatran forests, and to many people's surprise, it's made up of thousands and thousands of tiny male and female flowers, instead of just being one single flower. The flowers exude oil, while the large spire in the center collects heat. And so it's the hot oil that creates the fresh dead body smell, which somehow manages to attract beetles to pollinate it. And since these plants are huge, a mature adult can easily weigh up to 200 pounds. Number 14. Elephant Foot Yam Known in the scientific community as Amorphophallus pionia folius, us regular folk can simply call this plant the Elephant Foot Yam. And it just so happens to be related to the corpse flower, which makes sense because the Elephant Foot Yam smells like a dead body too. But this plant can come in all different colors, from white to purple to brown. But unlike their stinky cousin, the elephant foot yam is edible and is considered a delicacy in one Southeast Asian culture. However, in plenty of other cultures, it's known as a last resort food, which is never a good sign. The yam itself grows underground, but the flower, if you can even call it that, grows above ground and can look like a straight up turd in the grass, especially when it's covered in flies. So if you do see one while traversing Southeast Asia, it may be best to just plug your nose and keep walking. Number 13. Rafelsia. Okay, one last stinky flower, we promise. And this one may just be the best looking so far. The Rafelsia originates in Indonesia and is unique in that it's the largest single flower in the world. But it has no stems, no leaves, and no roots. It just kind of is. Some people think it may be related to fungi, but you can't deny what it looks like. But like some of their cousins, the Rafelsia is extremely hard to find in the wild. When the Rafelsia first starts its life cycle, it exists as a small and inconspicuous parasitic tissue on the vines in Indonesian rainforests, but eventually they'll develop a tiny bud, and over the course of a few days will grow exponentially to become the world-famous stinky plant. The hole in the center is so big that you could probably fit your entire head in there, but we don't recommend anyone do that, thanks to the smell. Number 12. Venus Flytrap Next on our list is probably every little kid's favorite plant, the Venus flytrap. While most plants are soaking up the sun and using photosynthesis to get their nutrients, the Venus flytrap is more than happy to snap up the occasional bug or two as a little treat. The Venus flytrap looks like an alien from another galaxy, but yet somehow it's native to the boggy areas of the Carolinas, where the soil is poor in nutrients. This is probably why they look for a snack that's high in nitrogen every once in a while. Inside each little mouth or trap are tiny trigger hairs, so if anything manages to land inside of one, the hairs will feel the movement and then the trap is going to shut a lot faster than you would think a plant can move. And the healthier the Venus flytrap, the faster those jaws are going to shut. And what makes the Venus flytrap really cool is that their heads can send chemical messages to one another and essentially communicate about their prey. But once they've got a nice insect in their clutches, their digestive juices break down the body and, well, that's the end of that. Number 11. Tropical Pitcher Plants Tropical pitcher plants look and sound nice enough. Water gathers in them during a heavy rainfall, and monkeys have been seen drinking from them on a hot day. But then again, half-digested rats have also been found inside of them too. So if you ever find yourself on its home turf of Sumatra in the Philippines, or Borneo, maybe don't get too close to the tropical pitcher plant. And so far, there are about 150 known species of them, so good luck identifying them all. The tropical pitcher plant will eat just about anything that manages to fly inside its pouch, which is coated in a sticky sap to make sure that once you're in, you're not getting out. 
They like worms, termites, spiders, and even lizards, but the smaller insects seem to be its preferred meal of choice. Each individual species of tropical pitcher plant have their own complex relationships with the ecosystem that they live in. One has evolved to host a colony of carpenter ants that clean off the carcasses of the plant's larger prey, which left unchecked would be bad news for the tropical pitcher plant. But then again, some species of tropical pitcher plant have evolved to become the toilets of small shrews by providing them with a special sweet exudate. The plants actually use the shrew poo as a source of nitrogen. It is a weird relationship. Number 10. Cape Sundew Drosera capensis, also known as Cape Sundew, is found throughout South Africa and is another unusual yet awesome carnivorous plant. And it's safe to say at this point that there are more carnivorous plants out there licking their chops than most people know about. And so, the Cape Sundew's arms and leaves are coated in sticky sap that once an insect lands on them, they're not going anywhere. Think of it like leaving a glue trap out for a rat in the house, except somehow less gross. Once the Cape Sundew feels the insect has landed, it starts to wrap those big arms around its prey. It's an incredibly slow process, but it's not like the bug is going anywhere anytime soon. Actually, the entire process can take up to a half an hour. It may be cruel, but hey, sometimes that's just nature. At the same time, this sticky plant is incredibly invasive since it can reproduce and survive in just about any climate and season. So while the Cape Sundew may take care of pests, it itself is a pest. Number 9. Strangler Fig This next plant has a pretty mean name, and as you'll see, it kind of deserves it. The strangler fig is one of the biggest moochers on the planet, so much so that it kills the plants around it. There are plenty of different species of strangler fig, but they all do the same thing at the end of the day. The only problem is, they look amazing. So what's the big deal anyway? Well, the strangler fig can grow up, down, or sideways, this way and that way. But whatever it does grow on, usually trees, they rob the neighboring roots of all the nutrients, eventually killing them. So it grows up to absorb the sunlight, and then it grows down to attack the roots. It's pretty brutal when you think about it, and the strangler fig can easily outlive their tree hosts by years. Number 8. Witch's Butter what could be better than a plant known as Witch's Butter? Also known as Tremella mesenterica, Witch's Butter is an amazing looking fungus that you can also eat. But depending on where in the world you go, it's also been called Yellow Brain and Golden Jelly Fungus. Whatever you want to call it, it is one unusual species. It can reproduce both sexually and asexually. So if you do happen to take a bite out of this gorgeous little mushroom, you'll find that it tastes like absolutely nothing. Yep, no taste at all. Witch's butter is being studied because of the incredibly unique biological process that it undergoes, and some would argue that it has some health benefits, although the jury is still out on that theory. But there's still no harm in chowing down on a plate of witch's butter. Like plenty of other fungi in the world of plants, this one grows on dead trees on just about every continent, and is even parasitic on other fungi. Number 7. Hammer Orchid the Drakaya glyptodon, or hammer orchid, is a cool-looking plant native to Australia and gets pollinated in a pretty unusual yet unique way. You'll first notice their appearance, complete with a little red dangly thing with a black thing on top. Okay, so you'll find this appendage on all of the hammer orchids because they mimic a female wasp's body. But why do they need to do something like that, especially with wasps? The female thynid wasp is totally flightless and just so happens that they love to climb onto the tops of plants to signal and get the attention of the male wasps. You see, the males are the ones who can fly, and they pick up the females off of the plants before mating. So when the male wasps try to sweep the hammer orchid's appendage off its feet, it ends up getting pitched into the mass of pollen. From there, he'll hopefully get fooled twice and fall for the same trick on another hammer orchid and complete the pollination process. The entire thing sounds like more trouble than it's worth, but it gives new meaning to the question, why do fools fall in love? Number 6. Hydnora If you're hiking around in South Africa and run into the Hydnora, don't freak out. Although it may look like some sort of sinister sci-fi creature, it's just a plant, we promise. The Hydnora grows almost completely underground, only exposing its flower to the rest of the world but the flower is shaped especially to maximize the efficiency of its bristles to direct beetles right into the center. But how exactly can a plant lure a beetle into its maw? The center of the Hydnora smells like poop. It's really as simple as that, and the beetles are definitely into that sort of thing. 
especially the dung beetles, for obvious reasons, and sure enough, they'll walk right in there. But despite all of this, the Hydnora doesn't actually eat the beetle. Instead, it closes down on them and virtually holds them hostage while covering them in their pollen. When the time is right, the plant will release the prisoner back into the wild in the hopes that it will find a Hydnora of the opposite sex. But once they're pollinated, the Hydnora will bear fruit that's similar in taste and texture to a potato. Number 5. Wolfia Ariza The Wolfia Ariza is a special little plant, and we do mean little. This little guy is the smallest flowering plant in the world. Any smaller, and it would be microscopic. But if you leave just a couple of Wolfia Ariza out on the table for a few hours, then you might come back to see hundreds more. They reproduce incredibly fast. Couple that with the fact that this teeny tiny flower doesn't have any leaves, stems, or roots, and you're looking at one seriously unusual plant. If you squint, that is. But sometimes they will sport a tiny flower with one stamen and one pistil. The Wolfia Ariza typically lives on ponds and rivers of North Africa, Europe, and parts of Asia, and is typically more commonly known as duckweed. There are several species of Wolfia Ariza, but they all hang out on the tops of the water, seeing as how they're way too light to sink. And they do make the perfect snack for both animals and people that are incredibly easy to collect. All you have to do is skim them off the water. And it turns out that the Wolfia Ariza is 40% protein, meaning you can't go wrong with a heaping handful of them. Number 4. Lithops Most plants don't want to be eaten, which is why they have unique and sometimes unusual defense mechanisms at their disposal. Some plants sting, others are poisonous, but the lithops have a less complicated method. They pretend to be a rock. It's as easy as that. There are dozens of diverse species of lithops, and each one has chosen a specific rock to imitate. They all exist in southern Africa, and in a drought may shrink down below the ground surface but their translucent top coating can collect all light that manages to make it through the dirt and gravel. So if you're ever in the area and are big into collecting rocks, chances are you may actually be picking up a lithop instead. But they can be more or less domesticated as well, and they do require a little extra tender love and care. But if you do manage to get the conditions just right, the lithops can sprout a pretty little yellow or white flower that look an awful lot like a more common daisy. Number 3. Victoria Amazonica. Everybody has seen a water lily at least once in their life. They're pretty hard to miss, and they're also, well, pretty. But one species really puts the rest to shame. The Victoria Amazonica is massive, growing up to three meters long, and the edges of the Victoria Amazonica bend upwards to avoid overlapping with fellow giant water lilies, and they grow thorns on their undersides to protect them from being eaten by any nasty aquatic creatures below. And somehow, a mature lily pad can hold up to 100 pounds as long as the weight is evenly distributed. It's strong enough to support a small child. Just make sure that if you do leave your baby on one of these giant yet unusual plants, you don't forget about them. These oversized lilies will also sprout white fragrant flowers that can only be seen at night. The flowers trap beetles, cover them in pollen, and then release them after a few hours in hopes that they'll pollinate another lily. And by the time the sun starts to rise at daybreak, the flowers will close up. Kind of strange that something so big is also so shy. Number 2. Dragon Arum The Dragon Arum is a gorgeous plant that grows in an even more gorgeous locale, like Greece, Crete, and the Aegean Islands. But the Dragon Arum can grow to a full yard long and is known for its deep red color. But more importantly, they give off an unusual odor that can be smelled from a mile away. But it's not like a corpse flower. Instead of smelling like rotting flesh, the Dragon Arum smells more like dung. You know, poop. And unlike the corpse flower, this one is found in southern Europe as opposed to Southeast Asia. They grow around ponds and rivers and rainforests, so they like a humid temperament, which only exacerbates their stench. But once it blooms, the stench doesn't last for more than three days, and if for some crazy reason you're looking to grow your own, which you can, just make sure to wear gloves, because the Dragon Arum is very toxic. Number 1. Bleeding Tooth Plant The final entry on our list really does take the cake, and if you couldn't tell by the name, this one may not be for the faint of heart. The bleeding tooth plant is a type of fungus that looks like it's straight out of a horror movie. But in reality, this unusual mushroom hails from the Pacific Northwest. The bleeding tooth plant earned its name from its pale white flesh with deep red pores that ooze out a thick red fluid. 
And if for some crazy reason you do feel like getting up close and personal with this scary fungus, if you turn it over, you'll find the base is studded with small, mean-looking spines. But surprisingly, the bleeding tooth plant isn't dangerous and may have some health benefits for humans brave enough to consume them. And it's only the young ones that have the ghastly appearance. As they mature, they develop a more brown and shriveled appearance. The sanguine substance is a type of sap that's forced out of the fungus by an excess absorption of water. And oddly enough, you can find the bleeding tooth plant in different temperaments all over the world from North America to the Middle East and even parts of Korea. And luckily, they like to hide amongst the moss and the shadier parts of the forest, so the odds of you seeing one out in the open and getting scared are pretty slim. Watch our nature playlist for more top 15 videos about beautiful nature. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best nature videos.